what, what, what you're looking, looking at in this image is, uh, they're called jack pumps, and uh, this is in an area um, around um, Bakersfield. So if um, you remember the, the movie, um, There Will Be Blood, um, and with Daniel Day-Lewis, and he discovers oil. It was in this area, it was the Kern oil field actually that was discovered. Uh, and it was one of the big, the beginning of the big oil boom uh, when gushers were, 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 were being hit and oil was just flooding into the landscape. I think uh, one of the gushers, they didn't know how to stop a gusher back then when they first discovered it. And I think one of them created a lake that was, you know, they just kept shoring it up with dirt and making a dirt berm uh, in a valley, and at one point it was 90 feet of oil. I think uh, some ridiculous amount of, uh, I think 90 million gallons uh, flowed out, um, which is actually not a lot compared to what's going on in the, in the Gulf right now when I think about it. Uh, but, um, but you know, that was, uh, you know, the, the beginning of the discovery of oil in America, which at that time really didn't have... Um, any because the automobile wasn't uh, fully formed yet, and um, you know the steam engine was just at its last legs. The, the the automobile there was no assembly line that had started at that point because this is the very beginning of the century. So I think it was like a barrel of oil was um, 14 cents and it bottomed out at 10 cents a barrel. So um, so it was you know the very very early days, and it's these these fields are actually still producing. Uh, over 100, 100 years later, uh, to to the mystery of a lot of uh, uh, of oil people, and they're not sure how it can continue producing. That there must be some slow flow from an area that they haven't quite geologically figured out. But it, the, but it must be migrating because any normal oil field would have dried up by now. That's also in the current oil. Field. So that's also in the same area. But but again, a very early. Um, where I was still shooting with film from aerial. So I started to realize that from the ground, I wasn't actually able to describe the landscape and, and how uh, we harvested that, that, that um, resource. And with oil, as with the, the, the freeway, so in 2003, I also photographed the, the freeways in LA. And, and it was there that I, saw, I tried photographing it from the ground or from high buildings, and it just did not read, it did not tell the story. And that's when I realized that I, I needed to get up to that, you know, three, 400 foot level. And the only way I could do that was with planes and helicopters. So, so it was really, um, you know, looking at the problem of trying to f add this to the story of oil and that it, 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 it wasn't being properly described from the ground. And so then I allowed uh, the subject pushed me up into the air, so to speak. What we're looking at here is um, we're looking at one of the very, very first uh, offshore oil platforms. Uh, uh, it was first developed by a Polish engineer uh, in Baku in Azerbaijan, which was a former republic of, of the USSR or, or Russia or what was known as the USSR. Um, and the Russians were, uh, it was key oil. It was like light, sweet, crude, the same stuff that comes from the Middle East, which is the most desirable, has very high octane, uh, very, very um, sophisticated lubricants can be taken out of it. Um, it, it it's, it's easy to process, it's easy to refine, um, and it's not as dirty in its refinement, unlike, uh, you know, like sour crude. Um, so, it's a very desirable oil, but what happened is that the fishermen would say, oh, I, you know, I, I keep seeing this oil slick every time I go by this area. So they knew that oil was not that far from the surface and near the Caspian Sea. So they brought in this engineer from Poland and they said, look, there's water just out here on the, on, on, and because we can see there's an oil slick, you know, every day, that must mean it's coming, it's seeping. So they refer to it as oily rocks um, because it's coming out of the rocks. And, um, so this uh, guy just went and said, well, uh, the Caspian Sea is a, it's a pretty, it's like the Aral Sea. It's an inland sea and, and, and it's very flat. So, um, so what, they, what he did is he said, I'm going to build a platform. So he uh, built these stilts. So what you're seeing on that, on that big barge are the stilts. So they would drop these stilts. That's the depth of the Caspian Sea. And then they would put a platform on it, and then they would get the rigging and go down and drill a hole 
um, you know, with about 23 meters, those, those legs are about 23 meters long, so they would start at 23 meters and drill down until they hit oil and then they were able to cap it. So actually offshore drilling was invented in Baku. Um, and, and so this was, um, but that process, what you're seeing there is all abandoned, but it was still a reference to the very beginning of offshore drilling. Here we're looking at um, Bangladesh, uh, and I went in search of where the oil, old oil tankers go to die, and it took me to a place called Shittagong uh, in Bangladesh. Uh, these old oil tankers are still full of oil and crappy stuff. Um, you know, they've been painted several times, so when they cut through the hulls, it's, it's pretty nasty. So um, the, whole, the whole environment there, you know, breaking ship, breaking oil tankers uh, was a nasty environment, probably the worst I'd ever seen, and I've never seen anything like it since. Um, because, uh, I mean, they were working with the most rudimentary tools. Uh, they were, you know, most of them were barefoot. Uh, they didn't even have cutting goggles when they were cutting, you know, through the steel uh, with torches, um, just bare-eyed, or with the clear, clear glasses. Um, and um, so it was really quite, uh, uh, it, it, I kind of thought of it would be like being able to step back into a Dickens novel at the beginning of the Industrial Revolution and kind of get a peek at it in today's world, but going on to those shipwrecking yards was like peeking back to the beginning of the Industrial Revolution where nobody knew about safety or no one cared one bit about the environment. Mm -hmm.